Get full episodes of The Damage Report as a podcast on iTunes and Android, and you can watch the live show every weekday on YouTube TV. So we've had this uh, big thing, where is Amazon gonna put their new headquarters? And uh, cities all over the country are bidding with each other to throw more taxpayer money to Amazon mm-hmm. to get them to relocate, uh, supposedly for the jobs that they'll provide. And we now know where those headquarters are gonna be. And it's not in one city, it's actually in two. The two locations, they're in Long Island City in Queens and Crystal City in Arlington near Washington DC. Those will eventually house at least 25,000 employees each, they say, pre-automation. It also said the new sites would require $5 billion in construction and other investments. So we've got our locations, they're not where I would expect. Generally these headquarters end up in some you know small town where that's even more desperate for the jobs. Yeah, but, but they're all going these to young- Millennial workers, you know, they want their kombucha and their, uh, Mm -hmm. I don't want to say avocado toast because I love avocado toast, but I make it at home. Uh, Yeah, (laughs) this uh, this helped no one. I'm sorry. (laughs) It Mm -hmm. feel. I mean, unless Crystal City is just barren earth with like, (laughs) I don't know, an Applebee's. Mm-hmm. then I don't know who it really helped. I am yeah. very surprised by this decision. A small bit of trivia, I looked up, do you know why it's Crystal City? Why? Because the first big building there had a crystal chandelier, and they're very proud of it. And so all of the buildings after that for a period were named Crystal Blank. They just really like that chandelier. So Crystal Amazon. Crystal Amazon. So I agree, the idea is you have all these millennial workers who want to drink their kombucha and then pee into the bottle on their breaks because they can't (laughs) actually go to the bathroom because it's Amazon. (laughs) So there are some huge issues. It's one thing to say they're gonna get 25,000 jobs, but when you actually look at the sorts of jobs, how much it's gonna cost the city, the opportunity cost of giving them all of that money, the gentrification that will result when you bring in all of the execs Oof. and everything. I mean, you were talking about so much else, or you could be. They're not actually talking about that. They're just saying, hey, we won, we got Amazon. And now we're gonna give them piles of money. Do you wanna know how much money Amazon is gonna get from this? Just from New York City. So Amazon will qualify for the city's relocation and employment assistance program, which offers employers a $3,000 credit per employee per year for 12 years if they move their business into the outer oh. boroughs and certain parts of upper Manhattan. Wow. With Amazon's projected workforce of $25,000, that's $900 million. From that one thing, Amazon put out a statement saying they expect to be given $1.525 billion. Amazon- In credit, tax credits. In tax credits. I don't know if you know this, Amazon is the richest company that humanity has ever produced. The and Earth's we are competing to shovel store. them cash. It is the Earth's biggest store. Yes, and look, I- We sell you I like Earth. Amazon. That's, they're gonna sell us to Martians in the future. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, hey, look, Amazon does some good things or whatever, and I've ordered- What, the You don't Washington wanna know Post? how many orders I've done through Amazon. I don't oh, yeah, wanna know a, how many. I've done so many orders. But it is horrendous in terms of the, the, the effect it has on the workforce. The way they treat their employees is with greater disdain than potentially any other massive corporation. But also it's, it is, first of all, all the cities that didn't win, very, very sorry. But uh, <laughs> your, your roads breathe a sigh of relief because mm-hmm. I think even Seattle was one of them. And it was like, oh God, no, please don't add more traffic to Seattle. Like the, mm-hmm. it's just, they can't handle it. But neither can these places. These, you're right in terms of gentrification, and these places are already incredibly populated. Long Island City, which is kind of one of the, in terms of proximity to Manhattan and like working class or like you know mm-hmm. um, still working class neighborhoods, Long Island City is one of those. Um, this is they're gone. Like it's it's done after mm-hmm. Amazon moves in. I'm from San Francisco. Like I can tell you what tech apocalypse looks like. Um, it looks like people riding. Grown men riding motorized scooters with helmets on the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. It's hell. I, mean, I like the idea of the scooters. It's as hell. long as they're electricity through it renewable is, energy. It is the most unflattering um, and disgusting thing. I'm uh, anyway. And so I, w- I want to get a lot get of displacement it, and a lot of gentrification. One hundred percent. I want to get into the politician that's speaking out of this, but I just want to briefly say again. It's 25,000 jobs now, that's what they're saying. When has a corporate press release about jobs that will be provided ever been a low estimate? (laughs) It is always an exaggeration, and by the way, the, the remaining humans still working for Amazon, their primary task is figuring out how to take humans out of the picture. I read an article 
about how Amazon has redone how laundry detergent is sold. It's in a totally new package so that it doesn't need to be put in a separate box. It can be like stacked super easily and, and, and all that in their truck. Their like efficiency is the only gospel at Amazon and the human meat bag doesn't actually work in that. It's too expensive, <laughs> it needs to pee on things. They don't want you and so they are working overtime to get you not so to be on overtime. there was no good place for the headquarters? I don't know, the moon, I don't know. It's gonna be all robots eventually to the sure. extent that it's already not. Look, obviously they have to have a headquarters somewhere and they're gonna have, there are some people who will get jobs out of this, that is a good thing for them. But I don't know that this is the way to do it. They're paying something like $30,000 per employee. In a lot of these cases, when you look at the numbers, I don't know why the state doesn't just have those people on their payroll themselves. Right. Why funnel it through the corporation, which makes a profit, and then gives them the job? In any event, I do want to give credit to- that's how much the tax break breaks down to? Is like yeah, it's so much dollars. money that they yeah. could just have a workforce. Yeah. Put them to work, I hear the subway needs some help. <laughs> um, so, okay, let's talk about one of the, the politicians in the area in Queens who's gonna be affected by this. Uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, you've never heard of her, but she's in that area. And um, she said that she was talking with residents of Queens, uh, current residents, they'll be pushed out soon. Um, but she said that they have a lot of concerns. And I wanna read a couple of her tweets about this. Amazon is a billion dollar company, the idea that it will receive hundreds of millions of dollars in tax breaks at a time when our subway is crumbling and our communities need more investment, not less, is extremely concerning to residents here. Displacement is not community development. Investing in luxury condos is not the same thing as investing in people and families. Shuffling working class people out of a community does not improve their quality of life. We need to focus on good health care, living wages, affordable rent. Corporations that offer none of those things should be met with skepticism. It's possible to establish economic partnerships with real opportunities for working families instead of a race to the bottom competition. Which is, this is the epitome of a race to the bottom conducted in every community across America. And understand that we're focusing on her, not just because I you know, like her and admire her as a politician, but because she stands out from other politicians in this exact case in the affected area. Yeah. Because both Cuomo and de Blasio, they're ecstatic about this. And their public statements have been that this is amazing, congrats New York. Don't focus on all the bad stuff that's gonna come from this. Just no. give us credit for bringing in jobs hypothetically. Goodbye, New York. I mean, it really is sad. And I think this, we're gonna see a showdown You know, with people like AOC and community organizations mm -hmm. all around uh, the five boroughs. And versus this, yeah, the, this moneyed tech apocalypse. I think that's how I called it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is... This is goodbye. I mean, if you've been around Manhattan for the last like 10 years, it's changed already. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the traffic is insane. The subways haven't been updated in like 30 years. Um, like, you know, it's there's still no air down there. Mm -hmm. Subway rat, the rats are getting just. They get pizza from time to time. Yeah, that's they get really pizza, it. Pizza, man, the rats are like super on Amazon's side. We're gonna call all the rats <laughs> Bezos, little little Jeffies. Um, but oh, you just reminded me. Can I just mention? Yes, please. So I saw David Sirota tweeted out. So. They have a, a list of the specific things that New York is gonna subsidize uh, to get the headquarters. New York taxpayers, regular working Americans who ride the subway are literally subsidizing a helipad for Jeff Bezos. Of course they are. And probably a rocket pack too, but why not? That's what I'm saying, if. Rocket pants. If, okay, I say if the working people who are going to be displaced and get $3,000, whatever their employers get $3,000 a, an employee, if the jetpacks can go to them first, mm -hmm. everything's chill. Mm -hmm. It but, would help with traffic. Yeah, but only for working class people. Exactly. Yeah, and look, I don't, then I don't begrudge the, the people, Jeff. the people who get their jobs. It's a good thing, but this is uh, by no means the best way that it could be done. And thankfully, we now have politicians who are actually speaking out and reflecting the concerns of their community yeah. while that community lasts. Okay, with that said, we are gonna take a break. When we come back, uh, Emma Vigeland of Rebel HQ is gonna be joining us. She was at a protest involving Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in DC outside of Nancy Pelosi's office. We'll be breaking that down after this. Thank you very much for watching this clip from The Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.